Well, Jake, uh, it's been a good weekend that we have to talk about. Another good weekend on the way. In this first segment, I'm going to tell you about my trip to Port Isabel because it was once in a lifetime. I had a great time. But we also had some neat things happen, didn't we? Yeah, you know, we had we had some blowouts. Yes, we did. We had a, a very big upset. Yes, we did. The Bobcats on a roll. Yeah, I don't think anybody but the Bobcats thought they were going to win that game. Yeah, they beat PS State Memorial 17-7. We had a record set, right? Yeah, we had, we had a record set in uh, the... The last Saturday's game. Boy, the I can't, one we didn't go to? Or yeah. I didn't go. Did Brownsville, go? No, I didn't. But we sent somebody there. You'll see the highlights. Mm. Brownsville Vets and uh, San Benito. 67-57. to 57. San Benito wins. They got hot from the three-point line. I had to use that old joke mm -hmm. again. But the, it sets a record for most points combined in a, a, a game with two Valley teams. And, it do, and not only breaks the record, it obliterates it. Obliterates it. Obliterates it. And we were at the game that had the previous record. Yeah, Vermont and Louis Gonzalez. Vermont for Palm View. Louis Gonzalez for PSG Memorial. When both teams were at, the, at that point of the season, they were just yeah. awesome. 65 58 was it 2010? Yeah, well, I, think so. look, I think it was 10. Anyway, 134 points is an amazing thing. So, a record was set there. The great game between Mercedes and Edcaps came off. Mercedes once again got quick out of the gate 14 0 in the first minute. Ed Couch fights back, and you look at the video, man, they came close to winning that game. Yeah, uh, it was a great game. Uh, Mercedes is starting to kind of do this too often where they get out ahead they and then they become real lackadaisical in the second mm -hmm. half and they have to like hold teams and down. And they did hold them. A kid almost stripped one of the guys at the end. It cats almost had the turnover. They had a long pass, a catch that wasn't a catch. I mean, it was that close. Uh, Mercedes dominated first, but uh, they still won the ball game. But boy, I'll tell you what, they're going to have to have more than 34 yards rushing or 24 yards rushing as they go along in the playoffs. But they win that big game. Yeah, and that game, by the way, Thank you for that game because it got us national attention because one of the PATs, you'll yeah. see the highlights in a little bit, uh, the PAT, the kid uh, bobbled the ball, picked it up, hurdled an Ed Couch Elsa defender and ran into the end zone. Roel Garcia, number yeah. one. Only, only Carlos can say those names the right way, man. He really works the good get I mean, he has yeah. incredible pronunciation. So I can't decide who the best player on the team is. I thought there was like 20 of them. Yeah, and right now, Mercedes is, is is lacking Vela. They need, they don't have a running back right now that yeah. they can go to because their ground game is not the same right now. No, but they are going to get him back in a week or two, and right now they're in the old catbird seat. Mm -hmm. Now we changed it from the driver's seat to the catbird seat in honor of Edinburgh high i still am very excited about those kids have been wanting that and coach escobar has been preaching to them not to give up they spring the home upset they're only one and two in district you can get back into the race with a game like that yeah i mean uh, they've got a tough game coming up it's a crosstown rivalry mm -hmm. between they the Jags on friday night yeah. but economies is looking for their first win in district so three they played a hard schedule they've been ahead of a couple of games They've got to get it together. A loss for Edinburgh High is tough. A loss for Economides is muerte. They're out. Yeah. So Now, you went to a great game. You know, first off, aesthetically speaking, it's a beautiful place to go watch a game. You know, that, that Port Isabel Stadium, you can see the bay. Uh, as I come to find out, man, there's all kinds of little stories and subtext down there. Uh, the, the subtext of the game was Rio Hondo was just a little sharper. You know, they had two turnovers, Port Isabel had four, Rio Hondo made some big plays, a couple of long bombs, they got the balance they've been searching for on offense, uh, and they converted their opportunities there at the end. They got a fumble in the last five minutes, drove down and scored, and uh, they were just a better team that night. Yeah, now when you were there though, there were some people that... Uh you know, mm. told you that they, they watch this thing we call the show. That's right, man. Hey, this is from my guy Martin, who's a diehard Port Isabel fan. I know those guys ain't going to give up on the Tarpons. It's unusual for them to lose a game like this early on the last couple of years, right? Uh, but them and Rio Hondo have become a rivalry that's pretty sharp. The cheerleaders down there, one, his name was Claudia, and her boyfriend, they watch the show. Don't give up, guys, and I know you won't because they're going to go to West Oso, and I would hate to be the Bears because it's going to be muy grosso con... Uh, <laughs> West also, uh, ni modo. They're going to beat them right. 70 to nothing. Yeah. They have to. And the good thing is you're going to a basketball school. It's like uh, Roma back in the day. You know, exactly. yeah, you know it's, a, it's a game you're looking forward to. West also has got a poor record. P.I. gets back on track. Now let's, uh, let's stay in that district for a minute because Rio Hondo, after that great win, you know, they got good quarterback play. Uh, they got a pretty good defense, a lot, some underclassmen. Those junior ends, man, Magallanes and Heredia, those guys are tough. They're fast. They're going to need to be against Orange Grove. Yeah, and Orange Grove is no pushover. Hondo I mean, Harris, I, he's a Western guy. Hondo Harris strode into the... You know, and he came into the playoffs last year and kind of, uh, you know, everybody was talking about him, you know, being this, you know, great player. But then he got his butt beat by P.I. Yeah, mm -hmm. so right now, 
you know, he wants to kind of uh, set the tone, kind of show everybody in the valley, look, this is what you have to go against. They already took out weeks. Raymondville. Yeah. So they took out Progresso, right? Like yeah. 61 nothing. So now they're going to go after the big game in the district in the, in the 4A jungle. I still call it 3A because I remember the old days, but I know it's 4A, so don't send me cards and letters. Rio Hondo's going to have to get a pass rush. And they're going to have to cover, and they're going to have to tackle because that kid can run the ball. He's got pretty good receivers. They'll throw all kinds of routes, man. It's not just a bunch of bombs. I'll throw those a pretty deep ball. I've been watching a ton of video. Yeah. I feel like I kind of know him. You know, I've never seen him in person, but so what? A little bit of size on each line. Rio Hondo's got a big offensive line. They yeah. really do, man. They 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 played well. You know, and, and this is one of those games they're going to have to mix the pass with the run like they did last week yeah. because uh, you know you're gonna, you're going to want to keep Orange Grove on uh, on their heels because keep the look, ball. Don't let him yeah, have the ball. Don't let Harris have the ball. Because once he, once he gets the He's ball, a college prospect, man. Yeah. yeah, you keep the ball away from him and ten or twelve play drives. See against the uh, Port Isabel, whose defense play, played pretty well. Yeah. It was not a bad effort. Man, I love this guy, fifty-eight, Augustine Hernandez. That guy's tough. He never came off the field. He was sweating like crazy, dude. I felt like he was gonna <laughs> slide right out of his uniform. Pedro Gonzalez, number six. He's real stocky. That kid's a player. Ninety is a be real for them. Road. Tall and kind of rangy, he can be a lot bigger. That dude lifts, he's going to be a monster, right? No, I was impressed with PI. They just had four to of turnovers. And if you're one dimensional, you don't pass, you have four turnovers, you're not going to win. And Stumball knew it, and the Tarpons knew it, and they just walked off the field determined to do better this next week, which they will. Yeah, and you can't turn the ball over that late in a game, especially when you're, you know, you're trying to move to overtime possibly. You're, you're at your 44, six minutes, you can't drop the ball, man. Rio Hondo turned that around. They drove down very quietly, very. You know, the Garate or Garate 24, Marcus, that guy's a warrior, man. He's a tough little back. Him and J.J. Gonzalez went back and forth. J.J., I thought he was a little guy, and he is, but he's pretty strong, and he'll attack you, man. That dude will run hard. He Pound for pound, I think he's one of the toughest backs I've seen in a while. Yeah, you think he's like a little uh, bowling ball, right? A little bowling ball. Well, we say he's not a 16 or a 12. He's more like an 8. Yeah. He's a bowling ball. Yeah. No, I, I was impressed. It was a fun game. The atmosphere was crazy. It was loud. The, the stands were packed. The only thing I can say is that they're probably still picking up those shredded newspapers that Rio Hondo <laughs> threw up in the air and it was just covered the field. It looked like Vince Young scored in the Rose Bowl. Man. If you haven't seen the pictures, they're online on our website, 956sports.com. You go under uh, Cheerleaders of Week 8. Oh, great. Yeah, I, I enjoy doing that, man. See, to me, it's the football, yes, but it's also the fans, the communities, the trip. I hadn't been down to Port Isabel to see a ball game in a while, and quite frankly, I'd miss seeing 3A and 4As. And I made a point of going. And I had a great time, and I, it, it never fails to uh, make me happy to go see the so-called small schools because they can play, man, and they take it seriously. Yeah, those were, that was one of my first games I ever covered was PI versus EE back oh, when Ed Couch also would go over yeah, there and travel. I remember that. So. You know, I, and and the upshot is some of the guys down there. By the way, they're big fans of the show, as we said. They were saying, well, how come we don't get our own segment? You got the six A's, you got the five A's. Well, I'm here to announce that this is your segment. The introduction is morphed into the four A. We can't get out of here without saying, hey, what about Raymondville? Don't count them out of the race. When we come back, we're going to start our usual progression here on the show. We'll go to those also ran the 6As and the 5As because the 4As is week of the stars. How's that? Sounds great. Indeed.